All right, and welcome back to the next episode of I'm a Plan Betra- Betrayal at Crondor. Uh, I'm Defender, alongside Jay Ricochet, Ricochet, as always. And today, uh, you might notice that we are doing this commentary in post, um, as because this episode and the next episode uh, I wanted to do by myself, because there was a lot more ground to cover. Uh, just because I wanted to do all the quests, like, there's some extra stuff I wanted to do, and I thought I might have slowed, slowed down the overall story of getting uh, Gorath to Krondor. Sprinting through trees is boring, basically. <laughs> so, uh, just south of Lamut, uh, we are ambushed. Sometimes this happens in the game. Uh, you don't see... Uh, the enemies won't, won't be on the ground, on the map, uh, and they'll just... Suddenly, uh, you'll just suddenly be able to attack. There's no way to, to get the jump on them. Uh, so what I've been trying to do in most of these fights is get uh, Owen's skill up a little bit in combat and in the accuracy, because you'll see even point blank he still misses. And Locklear there, uh, when every time he hit, would uh, flash um, blue, because that was the clerical oil cl- cloth we put on his... Uh, a sword back in the mines. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, it only lasts one uh, battle, so it's sort of wasted on that easy fight. But uh, we needed the space, what can I say? Actually, we really didn't, because those swords are only set up about three sovereigns. So I to, I'm not going to worry about uh, you know, not picking certain things up, because I don't have any space left. All right, so we've made it far enough south. Uh, we're at the town of Zun. Uh, it does not have a signpost out front. Maybe it was stolen. Um, it doesn't have a proper inn. All it has is the, uh, like we saw in Tirsog, uh, just the shop to buy food. And I am recording this just after my rec- my uh, haggling video, so uh, I'm sort of in the habit of practicing that haggling. There's a little door that uh, Locklear gets his head beat in, and sure enough, he loses his seven stamina for opening <laughs> that door. You'd think such a trained warrior could take a drunk guy with a wine bottle. Yeah, yeah, you sort of think that. Apparently that must it does not bestow superpowers, or even normal powers. <laughs> Uh, so Zun, uh, Zun doesn't really have any uh, bearing on anything in the game. Really, it's just a, a minor little town. Doesn't you know, nothing really comes up. It's sort of at a crossroads. Um, Someone just left a pile of money in an abandoned house. So I guess that's what the town is going for it. <laughs> and a crossbow uh, string. It's an herb shop. I'm not a big fan of these because uh, I don't usually buy anything from it, and I usually don't want to sell any of this stuff when I have it. Here is uh, Killian's root oil. This is like a clerical oil cloth, only uh, it uh, bestows 50% bonus to damage or protection against. Redweed brew uh, increases melee accuracy, so that's a handy. Uh, potion and true sight T increases the uh, melee uh, crossbow accuracy now when I played the game I would pick up a lot of these potions and oil cloths and dragon stones and all that stuff you, I would al- almost never use them um, I don't know why even on uh, hard battles I'd fight over and over and keep dying and dying I'd still refuse. I'm like, no, no. There might be a hard battle coming up, and I don't want to use it. Hopefully when I play through this time, I'll have fought in enough combats and know in advance what's coming, but uh, I should be okay. This little jut out to the right, this little horseshoe out here, uh, has a little bit of extra stuff. First things first is an ambush. 
surrounded by mountains, so I can only assume that somebody was, these two guys were standing at the top of that sharp, steep cliff to, the to, to our right, and just came tumbling down. This guy that just moved only has a speed of, I think, two, which is terribly slow. Maybe he broke his leg on the way down. <laughs> Owen there just, uh, blasted Gorath with the fireball, in case, in case you missed that one. <laughs> Not all of Owen's spells that he's gonna get are uh, line of sight. Uh, some of them are guaranteed hits. Can't even hit with straight in front of him. Well, I mean, it's always straight in front of him. You know. Even though it's on... No, the animation's at 90 degrees, so... <laughs> That's a good point. Now his casting's up to 66%. It's always good. A little bit each time. And obviously, with all these skills, they get a little bit harder to raise the higher percentage they are. Um, once you get a skill up to about 90%, um, it's nearly, not nearly impossible, but it, it takes a long time to go up each percent at that point. But you're generally good enough that you're not really going to be grinding to get anything higher than that. I mean, already at this point, Gorath's uh, weapon craft is up to, uh, let me show it here, there's something, at least in the mid-60s, mid-upper 60s. Which is fantastic. And this is what I was going for. Scrolls. Now, this was a scroll for Flamecast, which is that spell that Owen's been horribly missing with. Um, but it's always good to have scrolls, because they sell for hundreds of sovereigns in the shop. Um, and while you do have to sell it to a shop that sells scrolls, uh, fortunately, you can, uh, when you find one of those, you get quite a bit of cash. Stuck looking for this in the dirt pile that has a spoiled ration and four sovereigns. So now we are at that crossroads, just south of Zoom, um, and then we're going to be heading east towards Hawks Hollow. We were going to come out over here anyway to get that, uh, to investigate that chest. Uh, that we knew was way down here. Right there, I just right-clicked on the guy. Uh, I don't do this a lot, but you can right-click on anything, just like you do in your inventory, in the game screen, uh, and, and the characters will just look at it. Which is handy, I guess. That was a pretty straightforward fight. Owen didn't blow away uh, Gorath with any flame uh, fireballs or anything, so... Not much to talk about. I like that in JRPGs, it's all about grinding through, fighting random battles over and over and over again. In Western RPGs, it's inventory grinding and bard grinding. <laughs> <laughs> Basically anything that's not fighting. Yeah, fortunately. Although I do love a good JRPG now and again. This is a beautiful rendition of the Lincoln Memorial. <laughs> do you like those uh, like those pillars? <laughs> the so here's Temple. Uh, there are about um, 15 temples in the game. And um, obviously each one has its own uh, benefits. Well, they all look like this, this intro screen or this intro foyer. Um, you can always slip in the back and talk to the... Usually this, this talk option has a variety of people. It could be the, the local priestess, it could be an acolyte, it could be um, whoever. And, of course, all the temples are dedicated to one of the many gods. There's a lot of... Uh, the, the, the god hierarchy in our structure in uh, mid and in, in, in this world of gameplay that takes place in... Uh, is that there's, uh, without going into too much detail, there's about, again, about a dozen or, or 15 uh, gods, and they're sort of based on the Greek gods or Roman gods. Um, just quickly as I'm going through here, blessing, uh, each 
temple has a blessing option, and you can only bless armors and weapon, armor and weapons. For some reason, I decided to bless the rations, uh, which I thought maybe would be a nice touch, you know, saying grace, you know, in a temple before you eat the rations, but no. Phil only blessed with weapons and armor, um, and each temple has a different uh, blessing type. So the types are, um, again, mentioned this before, type 1, type 2, and type 3, uh, which is 5%, 10%, 15% bonus. Uh, unfortunately, it's mostly pretty expensive. I'm not going to bless any of this crap that we have now, uh, because it's obviously very expensive. Um, but also, the, the, I'm not going to bless anything unless I get the best blessing. So we'll see sometime in chapter two. Um, we'll get down to a temple that gives us the blessing type three. Uh, the other thing in here is, is teleporting. So you definitely want to hit as many temples as you can, um, particularly for the later game, because it'll allow you to teleport. Now the, the description that he's giving is that think of a uh, something that you know, something you're very, a location you're very familiar with. Um, this is a big concept in the. In the books, the magicians, Pug, and the surrounding great ones uh, can teleport around at will, um, which is a little bit OP. You know, you'll see Pug, Pug will, you know, warp all over the place to get to where he, he's needed. But within the context of the game, uh, it's very nice because when, you know, at the start of the second chapter, you know, if there's a temple down in Krondor, we could teleport right up here uh, if we needed to complete a quest or just prevent all the, the traveling. All right, time for our favorite, a puzzle chest. I'm not sure if I've given you enough time to accurately, uh, you know, guess this. Run. 20 paces, you'll see, no less, no more. Starts with E, G, F, or S. It comes in from sea to shore. No, nothing. Nothing. You didn't grow up on the beach, did you? I didn't, but oh. Now I'm going to try to hit as many of these puzzle chests as I can. Normally I wouldn't. Uh, you know, worry about six lockpicks and eleven sovereigns, but uh, I, I mean, I, I love the, the puzzle chests. That one, like you said, well, like, like I said, um, it's sort of a poetic one. Um, and uh, they don't really go into a lot of details. The, the locals call these uh, fairy chests, uh, which is more, you know, I think that, that had come up in an earlier episode. Um, and the people don't necessarily know. <laughs> Jesus Christ, severed heads? Tarnished pieces of armor. Yeah, I'm not really sure why they... what made them think that this was... Oh god, helms! Body parts They look like around. severed heads. I mean, unless they were, like, painted or something, but nothing, none of it was ever said. So this shop is not a shop, it's just a repair place. And, um can't repair anything that's higher than 95%. Um, can't repair crossbows at all. And, and the fee, alright, it's a so, it's two sovereigns for 5%. Um, you know, I guess that's alright, because we can't, because I think I'll bring it up to 100. But it's 10 sovereigns for the, the fancy armor. So, we're not going to be repairing anything. Um, oh, uh, Gorath can definitely handle the situation. But I like the comment that uh, Locklear said, well, we'd rather just buy an armor's hammer. <laughs> and the guy was like, well, yeah, I'd rather you not put me out of business either. <laughs> I don't know why it's nighttime. I don't know... Because it was daytime when we went in, and I don't have an explanation for why it got so late while they were in the shop. So now since there's nothing in the game world, I'll just drive around on the map for a little bit. But now we are approaching 
Hawk's Hollow. Just branch off here to the right. See, I right clicked on that guy, not left click. And so, <laughs> here's, what, here's what happened in the game, in, the, in this battle. I don't know how that shot was possible. It passed in front of the rogue and still hit Garnet. So I right clicked instead of left clicked, so it didn't actually, like, try to ambush him. So from the game's perspective, it was like, oh, we just ran, it. we were just running along and got into, fight, into a fight. The guy has very good dodging skills. He just avoided it, and Gorath was right behind him. <laughs> Those funny talking elves what live in the Northlands. So we got a that note from a guy named Lucan about his chest that needs being cleaned up. So there, I just drank Thamador's formula, which increased Owen's accuracy in casting a little bit temporarily. But now here we are, west of Hawk's Hollow. And that road off to the right, that is Hawk's Hollow over there. And so, this certainly looks like it's the chest that that scribe wanted us to take a look at. Alright, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it. Mark. So, another locked chest, and... Oh my god! Huge explosion. I was debating cutting the episode at this point. Just a cliffhanger. Cliffhanger, absolutely. Are they dead? Who knows? But they're not dead. But it certainly was a trap chest. So way back in uh, the first or second episode, uh, when we encountered that building that looks like a shop, um, and we saw, found all the trip wires laying around and the workings of what uh, looked to be a trap, um, a little bit of foreshadowing to the idea that here we have trapped chests. Certainly worth it because we picked up a, um, or we're picking up a uh, emerald. That's uh, certainly a very nice um, vendor garbage. And as far as the damage, uh, we can see it did about 40 damage to everybody. Maybe not even. Which is a lot, but not, it certainly didn't kill us. Uh, now, we're still going to uh, beat the hell out of the uh, scribe that told us to go, you know, bust into this trapped chest. But we're alive. So I gave Owen some, uh, some healing powder. Uh, healing powder, I believe, acts... Uh, the same way as being drunk in an inn, uh, and you cover health slightly faster uh, than otherwise. But using one use of that of those healing um, of the healing pack gives 100% healing status. Um, so it lasts. I think that lasts 33 hours, which is pretty handy. So we've made it to Hawk's Hollow. May as well stop in, see what they've got. Make sure I don't lose any, miss any buildings there. Or miss getting your head bashed in by a wine bottle again. <laughs> so we find another inn. First things first, hit up the barmaid. At this point, we're running pretty uh, pretty heavy on the, the rations. Usually, I, ne I never have much more than uh, 14 rations a person. Locklear tries to win her over with an emerald, but no dice. So, he moves on to the next woman in the bar. Finds himself not, uh, not hitting a home run here. And slinks away. Sick burn by the beautiful woman. 
I uh, debated sleep sleeping here, but we'll be fine. Random drunkard in the bar at uh, new, uh, dawn. Owen just chats him up a little bit. And you can't leave a bar, uh, uh, an inn without barding. You got an upgrade from 15 to 17 sovereigns. Yeah. So obviously that 20 hours of practice. <laughs> well, some good. that's yes. Um, the other way of thinking of it is maybe Hawk Solo has a little bit more in the entertainment fund to uh, dispense out. I would think that Lamut would give more because they seem to be a more prosperous town. Um, Hot Salt is just sort of a um, middle of nowhere kind of town. Coming along with this uh, abandoned tavern, sort of like a barn. More rations. More rations. Now, when you have this many rations, um, I believe I, I put this in as a, a tool tip um, on one of the other videos. But the way that you increase your health in the game is every 30 days of time that pass, uh, you get an extra one, one health and one stamina. Um, so if you have find yourself amongst lots and lots of food, uh, it certainly doesn't hurt to sleep. Uh, over time, you'll get more health. Um, it'd certainly be a very expensive way of doing it, although there are tricks in the game to uh, to make the most of it. So we find a gem shop, so we may as well offload our brand new valuable gem. Fortunately, we only get 83 sovereigns for it. That'll bump us up to our new record of 438. I was hoping I could sell that scroll, but uh, no dice. And the Amulet of the Upright Man. This is a great amulet. Uh, you'll see that this is uh, has an inscription from the god Banath. Uh, ooh, god of fucking thieves. What that amulet will do is uh, increase... Uh, your lockpicking skills simply by having it in your inventory. Quite a handy little uh, amulet. But the best part of it is that while it will, as we'll see in a moment, that Owen's skills in lockpicking brings us all the way up to 20%, which doesn't look like it increased at all until you remember that he only had 5 before. So it'll give you a 15% bonus. The best part is that they stack. If I found another amulet, it would have another 15%. Um, and lockpicking is a fairly difficult skill to raise. Um, and there are certainly some locks that are uh, quite a bit of uh, skill. Um, 90, 95, um, especially for some of the good ones. So these amulets certainly are pretty valuable. So don't mind me, I've just checked off the sword for block pick on all of the characters. Seemingly random action that I've just performed. Before I go click on this house. Ah, oh, Lucan. We've heard that name before. So I'm not really sure how Locklear has the skills to be able to detect a uh, pickpocket. But not catch a wine bottle, aimed at his head. <laughs> and still not catch that wine bottle. So we spare him his life, not that not that 
Lock Layer was ever going to kill him. If he didn't kill Owen, he certainly wasn't going to kill this random guy. Um, in exchange for uh, him teaching about lock picking. Which again, like I said, it's difficult to raise this skill without... Because it's very tedious to to uh, grind your lock picking skill. I've never done it in any of my games. Um, but again, if you lock, you know, pick the same lock over and over, this skill will, will go up. Um, or try to... You know, try or actually successfully think. So that will be handy. There's one more interesting chest here just to the northeast of Hogs Hollow. Wander off in that direction. Another three letter one. Here you go. H E or K. The first three, the first three lines are the big hint. Yeah, these are always such weird riddles. Do you get it? You get it? You get it. It opens the doors. It's a key. So, I don't need that note anymore. And because I edited it quite a bit, because I kept pulling out the wrong note. This ties into that guy in the uh, house near, near the barn about show me your hands. I'm going to guess that all of the Mordell assassins have that uh, tattoo on their arm, or on their hand. Although it's never come up before, and I don't believe it will come up again. So this was where I was going to turn around, uh, Hawk Solo. Um, but I ultimately decided to head north to uh, L'Oreal and, uh, and meet up with that scribe that way, and then come back through Zun and... Uh, take the coastal road down to, to Crondor. Uh, there's a couple of things we can do on this uh, road north. Uh, it shouldn't shouldn't take too long, but uh, we'll see. Between this episode and the next one, uh, we'll bring our way all the way back to Zoom. So wandering north, we encounter a man named Isaac. Locklear's old drinking buddy. I thought I recognized you. Now, this don't forget this video or this game came on floppy disks. The first, uh, the first run of it. Um, so all of the voice acting that we hear is. Uh, must have taken a lot of space because there's only a, like a dozen lines of audio. Uh, it would have been nice, especially when they the second iteration they came out to a uh, sound CD to you know I don't know at that point it would have been much later, but it would have been nice to have a uh, full game of uh, voiceovers of some of the text because there really isn't a lot. Um, of conversations. Now, between between the parties, you know, Gorath and Owen and Locklear, they do talk a lot amongst themselves, but in these scenes right here, we get the little music and whatever. It'd be nice if that was voice acted. So, just p picking up some rumors from Isaac. Uh, some festival going on uh, to the southeast between Angley and Teneres. Isaac clues, clues us into the idea that we aren't a uh, terribly good, uh, a very good cover of an elf, a 
Signor uh, and a boy wandering around. Gives a little bit of a hint towards some mind readers. Um, that's an interesting bit that hasn't come up before. So I'm not entirely sure why Locklear brought it up, but. Uh, So, just a guy on the road. Wander around a little bit more, still heading north around this mountain. Here we get Gorath, flaunting his scouting skills. I'm not entirely sure what he means by three-inch wide wagon wheels indicating an ambush rather than the typical six. I don't know what narrow wheels... Weight? That's about, like, maybe the wheels get wider under weight, and so it would be wider, but now it's only this wide because there's no one in the thing because they got out of the, the wagon. I don't know. Could be. Why not? I only guess. Uh, so then this one guy set up the ambush for us. <laughs> I was going to cut this whole uh, whole thing out, but uh, it was over in about three rounds. So I just left it in. Twelve more rations. Could never leave food behind. It certainly costs more to buy those rations than that shell would sell for. This time, and I like how the audio cue of the bird actually does sync up, um, a bird flies out of a tree. Well, that's certainly a good sign. I mean, that's something you could certainly notice. Um, why did that bird suddenly fly away? Although it is the forest and the woods and whatever, and birds fly around for random reasons. But it never hurts to be cautious. It's so another trap with two... Uh, I don't even know what to call them. Two sets of poles. Uh, this time, because he's a spellcaster, I can't just pull him into a trap. I'm like, you know what? I better try to take care of him right away. Full power. Oh, oh. <laughs> so he lit that tree on fire. Yeah, who knows what is destroyed out back there? Entire mountainside just burning. <laughs> so I move luckily into into attack. And for whatever reason, I have no idea why, the guy never fights back. Just stand, he defends sometimes, but he never moves. I don't, uh, he might attack once. But magician's strategies are to move away, and I don't think he can move back, and he certainly can't move forward. So I think he just stands there. It was it's a strange fight. I sped it up so Owen could get his second health back. Let's look to see where sword is. Especially after Owen had to use them a few times, a few episodes ago. Once again, that looking around was because I thought that this combat you could see. <laughs> But again, no, it's an, another ambusher of one guy. I would sort of have thought that these guys could have, you know, teamed up, you know, ambushed together. Maybe they hate each other. Well, but what's this? Another set of elven armor. It's in low quality, but it is... Uh, it's an upgrade. So we'll certainly be hang, hang, hanging on to that, and we'll be doling that out probably to Owen. Random what looks like an inn, because it's so large, but a house along the road. I like the way this opens up. Reading a note on the door. Avoid any contact with him. So 
Sounds like he's got a cold, so I'm sure, I'm sure that won't be too bad. Sniffles. And yet, as soon as the door closes, they notice sickly looks in each other's eyes. Plague, 21%. <laughs> they are all plagued. What will they do now? Find out next time. <laughs>